Okay, this is 37th Street Radio and TV, and we are out here hooking up with the best of the best interviews. And today we have another special guest. So, guest, please introduce yourself. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is Dali Chaboy. I am the founder and CEO of Tucker Africa. So, Tucker Africa is a nonprofit that uh, teaches computer skills in rural schools in Kenya and eventually Africa. Yeah, so we can just uh, start from the basics. Maybe where did you grow up, the schools that you attended, and your childhood? So I, I grew up in a small village in, in Mogotio, in Kenya. And um, yeah, I, I, have, I have two elder sisters and I have one younger sister. And so during my formative years, when I was like nine years old, my two sisters were in high school. And uh, high schools in Kenya is very expensive. So my mom was working really hard to put my sisters through school, which, um, which was really hard for me because I sometimes would go to bed without food and then I was raising my younger sister. So I, um, I became to really value education and, and have the, the grit to rewrite the lives of kids growing up in rural Kenya, just watching my mom really devoted to educating us, even though our self would be a little bit, right? And being in such an environment, uh, what did you think you will ever become when when you grow up? I think I, I knew I knew that I had a better chance at uh, if I started really hard in school. I just envisioned a life where my mom would not have to work so hard, and also a life where the kids growing up in communities like mine don't have to be this hard. And so, so I, my own the price was really just to look at sustainable solutions towards fixing poverty. Yeah. Mm, so as you grew in such an environment and then uh, where did you go to uni? What did you study? So, so I, I, I started really hard in school. And so during my primary education, I used to go into a hospital and stand the street there and, and just like studying. And, um, and, and, and I did well in school, went to a really good high school, really struggled with tuition as well. But also did very well and from that got a scholarship to go to America. Um, and when I got there, I studied computer science towards the end. Was that what, uh, do you think uh, that was what uh, sparked the, let's say the innovation side of you just coming up with new things, did that spark that? I think I always had it. I was always doing something here in the community too, even before I left, like I would, um, I would teach kids, I would do tutoring, I would sometimes sell charcoal and save that money to, to use with my family. I think just it gave me a bigger platform to work on what I believed in, but yeah, I was always doing that. As you have said, um, and I, I've also seen that you are the founder of Tech Lit Africa. So I don't know how this idea came about. Oh, uh, okay. So, so when I got when I got to America, uh, in America you could you could work as a student, and so I was doing janitorial work, uh, cleaning bathrooms, and so uh, I would save all that money. And the goal was to come back home and 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 move my family out of poverty. And and so after one year of working, I saved about seven hundred dollars, moved moved to Kenya, uh, just flew to Kenya. I moved my family to a nice apartment with, with water on site with electricity. And so they had um they had they had a really a much, really much better, decent life. And after that, um, so even though they had a, a really high quality of life, they could not afford, they could not afford living that. And so I was on the hook to keep sending money home every month. And so I decided to build a school, a very, very simple school. But the idea for the school was to be a source of income for the family. It's a private school, very small, like almost like preschool. But that um, uh, that went into, uh, so parents would pay like $10 a month and that amount will go into supporting the school and keeping the school running, but also, um, whatever was left to support my family. And so having that school, having a very a small school, it became a place where I could launch different projects. And one of those projects was Second Africa. 
So I started tackling Africa because growing up in the village, I first used a computer when I was 18, when I was going to America. And when I got there, I realized how far behind I was. It didn't matter how hard working I was. Um, I was just so far behind because I was, I did not know anything about computers when I was working with people who, who grew up, who grew up with, with computers. And so I, um, I, I, I realized just how impactful technology is, how impactful the tech, tech space is, and that's why I wanted to bring it, bring it over, over to Kenya. And also in America, we have people who are recycling computers every every three years. Every three years, they get new computers, and these computers are going to waste. So I figured if I bring these computers and have it here in the local community, we could I could really go a long way towards empowering people and lifting them out of poverty and that's really how how it started because if you can get someone online if you can get them like working on freelancing making eight dollars an hour they really goes a long way did you experience any moments of self-doubt when you were starting out any moments of setback <laughs> uh i think um that's always i mean it's always very challenging right uh i mean it, it's at the beginning, it was in the beginning it was um, shipping, importing computers and so on, and then and then you know like it's very expensive to import computers into Kenya. We get charged like twenty five percent of the computer's value, which is a lot. And then uh, so that that was one. And then so it's working a lot a lot harder to. Uh, to, to import the computers and get it over there. And then getting over here too, it's like we were trying to get adults who have never used a computer before to come in online and start um, and start learning, you know, how to build websites, learning freelancing, and most of them were not interested. And so that, that was really challenging to get them, to get them really interested. It became so challenging that we we actually gave up. We started working with kids because it was really hard to convince them that, hey, you can actually make money online. Yeah, again, just as we are talking about uh, how you started out. So, you know, like importing some of this, importing, when it, when it comes to importing, there are a lot of charges, like, I don't know, taxes, uh, when it comes to custom duty. So you just had the idea of starting and you are starting out. So maybe you you worked and you saved. That's that's was your, that was your starting capital, or how how did you find starting capital? Because there were expenses, even if the business is still starting. I think it wasn't. It wasn't that big. Like the amount was not that. It wasn't that expensive, so it was easy to just like to like bootstrap and pay for it, and then quickly down the road we. Uh, we were able to start a nonprofit and we could fundraise for. So it was really the biggest cost was just importing the computers. And so what we did is that we put the computers in our luggage, like in our as we fly, we bring the computers with us, and that became our pilot project. And so that down the road now, like now we have we have fundraising, we like we reach out to companies and we pitch and we try to get funds. But in the beginning it was just very simple. It was only about proving the idea. Yeah, again. From the tech, tech, tech lit Africa um, project, I've also seen that you have been able to set up a school. You know, this this is something that even many politicians have never tried. But you you have you have set up a school. So I just want to know, maybe how did you think about setting up a school? Okay, so the school is the one I built uh, when I was a junior in college, when I was a third year in college. That's the simple school I started with. Along the way, I've continued to build it up. And so when the school started, even before TechLed, the school is a separate project from TechLed. So it's another project that I'm working on. And the idea for the school is to provide all the resources that a kid growing up in rural Kenya deserves. And so we would have, um, we plan to have like dance studio, music studio, tennis, and, and so on. And so uh, given that I had a small school um, and it was doing really well, it just kept growing. It just kept growing. So we've, we've seen so much demand and so much interest and so much impact from the community it became easy to just continue like working on it. And so most of the school, uh, I, I, 
I work on it in private funding, like mostly from if I can get someone to lease a floor and pay for that upfront, or if I can uh, use my salary as a software engineer to pay for it, or if I can get a private loan from someone and they and then pay it back. It really is just um, just a little money here and there, and, and just believing in what it could be. You have talked about uh, the school has been able to help the community. So I just want to know, again, what do you think, uh, what are other things the school has been able to achieve? You have talked about uh, setting up projects uh, like music. So what are the achievements that maybe the society benefits, the community benefits from the school? So uh, we started a, a hair school. We, the school is different from Texas Africa again. So the schools are one started a hair school. And the idea for the hair school was to train women just hair braiding. And the idea was that if we could get these women who are mostly in abusive relationship, if we can get them financial independence so they could leave this relationship and actually have, if they have the option to, to be on their own without depending on someone, to go a, a really big well towards um, their own independence. And so we uh, we we worked, we partnered with a hair brand here in Kenya called Darling, and they provided the inventory and the training. And then the, the school already had real estate, it already had the space. And so it was a matter of providing the space to people and learning, um, providing the space and these people could learn you know how to braid hair and then we're seeing that in, in three months they're able to start their own salons or they're able to um, start their own salons or they're able to be employed locally so we're seeing them empowered uh, to be on their own financially you have uh, a couple of achievements in in terms of awards that i think they are they are not being talked about enough by the media so you can just talk to us about the awards and other achievements that you have <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, so I was named uh, Forbes under 30 uh, last year, uh, which was great, such a great opportunity because uh, we, we were at an event in Botswana recently and it was really amazing meeting all these people that uh, are really, they're very entrepreneurs, they really believe in, in making the world a better place through their various efforts. So that, that was such an honor. And then other, other, other words, like uh, my Akisana uh, College, um, provided me a humanitarian award and so on. Yeah, so uh, for guys who uh, are seeing the importance of what you're doing, I don't know if, I don't know how they can get to you and maybe partner with you in terms of facilitation of resources, if maybe they have any donations, how can they reach you? Yeah, I mean, I'm very active on LinkedIn, so you can connect with me on LinkedIn, like a LinkedIn, LinkedIn message. If you go to our website, techlerafrica.org, my email is at the bottom, so you can also reach out to me on email. Um, yeah. And for guys who are also maybe starting out, they want to do something, but uh, as you have talked about before, they have maybe self-doubt. What's your advice to them? I think I think my advice is just that you know you you if if you walk around trying to find advice and trying to find motivation you get discouraged but if you just start and then you start you, you start building building on the impact you're making already because when you see that you're making change no matter how small it will motivate you to keep going like there's no way when I started building this school I would have built a post for the community center but now that I started very small and I saw the impact we just kept 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 building so when you start it's really easy to keep going yeah okay thank you so much uh, for giving us your time yeah sounds good okay <laughs>